This is the Barbados Today Morning News for Wednesday, April 26. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. A four-hour meeting between the Ministry of Education and the teachers of the St. George Secondary School ended on an emotional note last evening. The teachers said they feel their concerns are finally being taken seriously. Among matters discussed were environmental problems, ill discipline among students, and insufficient curriculum. President of the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union, Mary Redmond, told Barbados Today that ministry officials handle their grievances with sensitivity. The chief and the PS who chaired the meeting obviously came with very open minds, I must say, and listened very attentively, very humanely. And they have promised we have a meeting, they have a meeting with the staff next Thursday to continue looking at how the problems at the school will be addressed. So the staff is very happy with the outcome of the meeting and very looking forward to what is to come at St. George Secondary. Redmond says going forward, a number of issues will be addressed in a bid to improve relations. The issues ran deep, had to do with curriculum, had to do with the fact that um, the, 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 the present program at the school is not meeting the needs of the students and it is causing a high level of frustration both for the students and the teachers and we think it is directly linked to the level of, levels of indiscipline and ill-discipline at the school. In other news this morning, Housing and Lands Minister Dennis Kelman is describing opponents of the controversial Hyatt Hotel as enemies of the state. Kelman made the charge in Parliament during yesterday's debate on a resolution on Crown Lands on London-born towers. It was a clear reference to legal action being taken by Attorney at Law David Commission against construction of the multi-million dollar hotel. We recognize that we can't just build the London-born towers and it's a standalone but you must have the necessary development in the area so that the people will feel happy to remain in the area and can see that they can drive and, uh, and get an opportunity to get a job in that particular area. There must be a mix. And I find it very, very short-sighted to some people who cannot appreciate that any development that comes close to London Bourne Towers or Nelson Street or so on can only be a positive and not a negative. And anybody who stands in the way should be seen as the enemy not only of the state, but must be seen as an enemy to the people who are also living in the London Bourne Towers because they are depriving them of an opportunity of having a job of being able to provide a service to service the debt or service the liability that they have with the NHC at some point in time. Local authorities say they are puzzled at a United States report that lists Barbados as a major money laundering country in 2016. Government has dismissed the document as baseless, but Executive Director of the Barbados International Business Association, Henderson Holmes, wants the U.S. to present evidence to support its claims. He acknowledges that Barbados needs tighter laws and regulations, but he says no mention of specific cases in the report means nothing more than a baseless accusation. The International Narcotics Control Strategy Report and Money Laundering and Financial Crimes lists over 80 countries and territories. Other Caribbean countries included in the document are Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Dominica, Haiti, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Sports Now, West Indies captain Jason Holder admits that his inexperienced side is going through a difficult period after they suffered a seven-wicket loss by Pakistan on the last day of the opening test at Sabina Park. The hosts started the second day on 93 for four, but failed in their bid for survival. They were dismissed for 152. Pakistan then scored the 32 runs needed to win, and they handed West Indies their 11th defeat in their last 15 tests with only one victory to show during that period. 
Yeah, we haven't been able to get off to good starts in this test match. And um, if you check the last test series, we've been struggling for an opening partner with Craig. Um, he's been a guy at the top who's really been, you know, the rock for us, you know. But he didn't get up in this game, and unfortunately, it's unfortunately so, you know. Just going forward, just need to get him going. I think once he gets going, you know, batters tend to bat around him nicely, you know. Just a matter of trusting our defence a little bit longer, you know, being able to, to stand up against the swinging ball up front with the with the quicks, and then when you have Sean, the other spinners coming, you know, we have to be a little tighter in our defence as well. There's regional and international news after this short break. Who call and get your yarns and potatoes? Let my girl know you want to see you for long. I can't how you keep it, but you don't sell any nation paper no more. But that paper ain't selling, this must know it stop selling that. Look, one time I would make a little dollar from the Sunday sun. But when Sunday night, I'm still trying to get the weather there. <laughs> well, you know you can't call that the Sunday sun no more. You gotta call that sunset news. Call at no time down you stale. People complain that they ain't got nothing in it to read and the price keep going up all the time, all the time. A woman abused me so sick the other day, telling me that she just read Barbados today or life for free. Mm -hmm. I can take that abuse in soul, so I switched to my potatoes and yams. Well, let me tell you, if pork selling, you got to raise pigs. How much for the yams? Four cents, the five cents a pound. Oh, but that's cheaper than that stale news. Give me... How much you want? A pound. Only a pound? Anyhow, these eating real good. Let me wrap them up for you. Come. The Barbados Today, news you can trust. We're back now with news from the region and we go to St. Lucia where Prime Minister Alan Chastney is due to present his maiden budget today. Chastney is expected to present a fiscal package totaling 1.5 billion EC dollars. Government has already announced plans to reinstate the airport tax which was removed by the former Kenny Anthony administration. It is also expected that the government will introduce a tax on gas sales to help finance its $200 million road reconstruction program. The former Haitian rebel leader Guy Philippe has pleaded guilty to money laundering in connection with an international narcotics scheme. The Department of Justice said Philippe appeared before a U.S. district judge in Florida earlier this week where he pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering. The charges stemmed from his receipt of cash payments derived from the proceeds of narcotics sales in Miami and elsewhere in the United States in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Philippe was elected to the Haitian Senate last November and he scheduled to be sentenced on July 5th. On the international scene, a U.S. judge has blocked President Donald Trump's executive order that sought to withhold federal funds from so-called sanctuary cities. It was another legal blow to the Trump administration's efforts to toughen immigration enforcement. The ruling from District Judge William Oreck III in San Francisco says Trump's January 25th order targeted broad categories of federal funding for sanctuary governments and plaintiffs challenging the order were likely to succeed in proving it unconstitutional. Today, the United States District Court for the Northern District of California issued a nationwide injunction in joining enforcement of Section 9A of President Trump's recently issued Sanctuary City uh, Executive Order. This is why we have courts, to halt the overreach of a president and attorney general who either don't understand the Constitution or choose to ignore it. This is why San Francisco had to stand up on behalf of people everywhere, be they immigrants or native born. As Americans, we all have a duty to confront injustice even when it emanates from the White House. Because San Francisco took this president to court, we've been able to protect billions of dollars that fund life-saving programs across this country. In San Francisco alone, about $2 billion was at stake. Without it, thousands of San Francisco's most vulnerable residents would have lost access to meals and medical care. Police, fire, and ambulance services would have faced cuts. Roads and public transportation would have fallen into disrepair. That's news this morning. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Or you can tune in to Mix 96.9 FM for more news and sports. I am Marie Claire Williams. Have a good morning. Thank you.